Hello everybody! Okay, in this session we are going to be looking at how to convert between file sizes. So to understand this a little bit better, we do need to find out what is binary. Now this is a term that a lot of us have probably heard about binary before, but we do need to recap it just so that we've got a good understanding of what our most basic file size actually starts at and then we can build from there so we've got a good understanding of why and how we're going to be converting between these file sizes. So in terms of a definition about what binary actually is, which has been a question on previous papers, computers use ones and zeros to represent the flow of electricity which is probably not the definition which you're expecting for what binary is. A lot of people will put something like the language the computer understands and things like that, which isn't necessarily wrong, but in terms of an accurate definition, this is what binary actually is. All data is converted to binary so that it can be processed. Like we've just kind of mentioned, the computer does only understand binary so that's why it has to be converted into binary or machine code as it's sometimes referred to so that the computer can then process that information and figure out what the instructions actually are. Here's the key bit that we needed to know. The smallest unit of measurement is what we call a bit or a single one or a zero. Now when it comes to file sizes, the bit is the smallest file size possible that we need to know about in our exam. When we hear the word file size, what does that actually mean? So it's the amount of actual storage that a file will take up on a secondary storage device. So if I was gonna store a picture onto my hard drive, for example, it's how much space that it's gonna take up in the hard drive or how much storage it's actually gonna use. Now these are the different file sizes that we need to know about for the exam. So a bit is our very beginning, it's the smallest file size that we need. And if we've got four bits, we can refer to that as a nibble. Eight bits is one byte. Now this is where we come to what I usually refer to as the magic number, 1024. Now you are allowed to use a rounded version of that where you round it down to 1000 and that's much easier to deal with and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So 1000 bytes or 1024 bytes to be precise is 1 kilobyte. 1024 kilobytes is 1 megabyte. 1024 megabytes is 1 gigabyte. 1024 gigabytes is 1 terabyte. And finally, 1024 terabytes is 1 petabyte. So that you can see what is why I call it the magic number because look how many times that number comes up. As long as you can remember 1000 or 1024, that makes our job so much easier when it comes to doing the actual conversions themselves. Now there are known file sizes that are bigger than this and smaller, however, this these are the ones that we need to be able to convert between for our exam. In the exam, unfortunately, it's non-calculator and they do phrase some of the questions in some ways which makes it a little bit tricky to figure out what it is that it's asking of us. So we're gonna have a little look at a few ways that we can approach these kinds of questions. So here's an example one. How many megabytes are there in one terabytes. Now I've purposely done this because a lot of people would think oh well it'll just be something easy like how many gigabytes are in one terabyte and we'd just say a thousand. But notice that I've not gone for that. I've gone for megabytes where so gigabytes is in between the megabytes and the terabyte here. So to do that we know that there's a thousand megabytes in one gigabyte. So all we had to do there was multiply it by a thousand. So one times a thousand, that gives us one gigabyte. Notice that I didn't use the 1024 here. I've just gone for a thousand because it's much easier to deal with and it's accepted on the mark scheme to use the rounded number. But because we're now at gigabytes, we then need to multiply that again by a thousand because that's how we're gonna get to one terabyte. So in other words, there are one million megabytes in one terabyte. Now, as you can see by looking at that, the easiest way of doing that would just be to add the zeros onto the end of the one because we've got six zeros there, which gives us one million megabytes. But you can do one times a thousand times a thousand. That will also give us 
Our correct answer, which is 1 million megabytes in one terabyte. Let's have a look at another one. So Mr. Moore has a two terabyte hard drive. An image is one megabyte. How many images can Mr. Moore store on his hard drive? So this is almost the exact same question that we've just had. However, look how differently it's been worded. And you would just need to not overthink it and just think, well, I need to know how many megabytes are in one terabyte. And once we have our answer, we can just multiply it by two because it's two terabytes. So again, one megabyte times a thousand, that gets us to one gigabyte. We then multiply that by a thousand, which gives us one terabyte. And finally, we know that there's a million images in one terabyte, so we can just times that by two. So the answer would be two million images in two terabytes if they were all exactly one megabyte. That's a lot of images. Okay, so to finish, I've got some more exam questions for you to practice, very similar to the ones that we've just done, but ones that we've definitely seen in the past on previous papers. So how many bits are in a byte? How many kilobytes are in one gigabyte? And finally, similar to one on our previous slide, Mr. Moore has an image that is two megabytes. How many copies of the image could Mr. Moore fit in a two gigabyte hard drive. So I'd recommend pausing the video there, give these questions a go, try not look back at your notes. And then obviously if you're struggling a little bit, maybe rewind the video, give another watch and let me know how you get on. Okay, and that's it for this session. I'll see you soon.